Wizards of the Coast have kindly sent me each of the Commander 2019 decks for free to open up and take a look at on the channel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll be tearing open the Faceless Menace deck and seeing what we've got. Alright there, how's it going? I'm Tim here at Digital Armor. Cheers for tuning in. So this is what's inside the Faceless Menace deck. We get an oversized version of Kadena, Slinking Sorcerer. I have no idea what to really do with these. Please let me know what you do with them in the comments. We also get a little fold-out summary sheet going over the deck and stuff. A deck box of sorts is fine until you try to use it. It's environmental waste in my opinion. And we get the deck itself. So let's try and get this wrapper off as quickly as my scrabbling fingers will allow. So starting out where you can imagine we would, with the three brand new commanders for the deck. Kadena, absolutely fantastic, really really love this guy, girl, Naga wizard. And basically yeah, it's a really unique effect being a morph commander. So the deck mostly focuses around this ability of playing cards face down and surprise an opponent when you flip them. So that is going to be something to look forward to, to upgrade I think. Going to start working on that soon. Volrath, the Shape Stealer is really exciting, I feel, as well. Everything's exciting. So at the beginning of combat, on your turn, put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature. And until your next turn, it becomes a copy of target creature with a counter on it, except it's 7-5. So yeah, you can just use any kind of counters. And this is going to be something quite interesting to build around as well. So the deck doesn't really delve too far into this kind of strategy. So this is going to require a lot more work to get going in an efficient way. And then Ray Army, first of the Fallen, is a vampire, which is black, green and blue, which is also unique. Uh, slightly less excited about this one, mostly because it's not actually Vampire Tribal, it is just uh, killing creatures and stealing their abilities. So if you've got suggestions for that one, let me know. Uh, I'm a bit stuck on it to be honest, although I haven't really given it much thought. The only other legendary creature that we get in the deck is Grismold, the Dread Sower. So another brand new card, can't be the commander of this 99 straight out because it's only two of the three colours and yeah plants, creatures dying, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah seems really cool, uh, a really unique sort of Golgari take on group hug almost um, but yeah we'll see how that plays out. We get some really interesting and nice cards in here for Commander. Maya in Misery is one of my standouts from the whole set. One and a black, each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. Enchantment removal is something that is quite often undervalued in EDH, so this card in black, absolutely stunning. Apex Outersaur is going to be slotting straight into my Gishath deck, it's just fantastic fun. Each deck is including a reprint of a Planeswalker and in this one we've got Vraska the Unseen. I absolutely love this version of Vraska. This is, yeah, one of the first Planeswalkers that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, creating 1-1 one, one Black Assassin tokens with that player loses the game if they get hit. Absolutely loving it. So I think this is the third time it's been reprinted. Not too expensive and an awful lot of fun. Speaking of reprints, we get some really really nice ones in here. Thran Dynamo is something that I don't believe has been included in a Commander product before. So that's really cool, putting it out there for the masses. Ixidron is a great reprint to be included in this deck. When it comes in it flips over all of the other creatures and then its power and toughness are equal to all flipped over creatures on the battlefield. We get a reprint of Seedborn Muse, last reprinted in Battle Bond, if I remember correctly. So untapping all permanents you control during each player's untapped step, super powerful. Strionic Resonator is in here as well. Now this card can do some work in the right EDH deck. I use it in my Dragon deck at the moment. Wasitora to be exact. So yeah, always handy to have extra copies of these cards lying around. What isn't always handy is when they reprint 
really, really recent cards into these decks. Bounty of the Luxor was from Amonkhet, and it's an amazing card. I love it to bits. The design of it is fantastic. Sort of getting one effect one turn, other effect another turn. However, it can be picked up so easily, I'm not sure it warrants a reprint so soon. Flicking through the rest of the deck, we get some really, really nice reprints. We get some more amazing new cards. There's an awful lot of morph creatures being reprinted in here, and Megamorph as well. We get your usual ramp with Cultivates, Explores, Farseeks. Secret Plans is a really cool include as well, so all of your face down creatures get plus naught, plus one, and when you flip one face up, you draw a card. Thought Sponge is another fantastic little card that I'm really liking. So it is creature type Sponge and it basically comes in with plus one plus one counters on it and then when it dies you draw cards equal to its power so yeah it literally soaks up the amount of cards that someone else is drawing keeps them for a little bit and then you get to draw them gift of doom is a morph enchantment so you can play it for its morph cost and then to flip it over you sack another creature and as it's turned face up you can attach it to a creature and that creature has death touch and indestructible so it's really nice to see them playing with that kind of space. Den Protector has been reprinted in here so when it flips up you can return target card from your graveyard to your hand so kind of like an eternal witness but uh, with Megamorph theme. Attempt with discoveries in here as well so more ramping. Trail of Mystery is a cool include as well, another enchantment that buffs up flip cards. By flip cards, I mean morph cards, it's not an actual flip card like werewolves on Innistrad, that kind of deal, but you know what I mean. Then we come to the mana base, and we've got the usual array of comes into play tapped lands. There are a few notable includes in here. Shrine of the Forsaken Gods is here. We also get a reprint of Thespian Stage, and it is enabling you to copy any other land and then you get to redo it again if you want to. There's also reprints of the old corset lands, so the ones where you can add either colour of a mana and then take one damage, so that's quite interesting that they're being reprinted. We do get the usual sort of gain life lands but come into play tapped, things like guild gates and rot farms. So as always, if you want to improve the consistency of deck, the mana base is what's going to be taken care of first. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Even using things like the temples that have just been reprinted in M20 and from the Theros era, they're really, really cool and not that expensive either. We've got the dual lands that are just about to cycle out, the ones that were reprinted in Dominaria. Definitely worth looking at those as well. Yeah, they don't always come into play untapped. However, they have got more chance than something that just flat out states that it comes into play tapped. Whilst they're cycling out of standard, they might see a decrease in price as well. In the basic lands, we've got a really nice mix of artwork. And as with previous commander sets, they've reprinted some previously hard to get or specialist promo lands in non-foil versions. And this time it's the Alana Dana lands. And these look stunning in non-foil, as well as the foil counterparts, of course. So the deck does include 40 lands, and that's more than likely to counteract the fact that it has so many come into play tapped lands. What you can do is cut that down to around 37, maybe 38, and use those extra slots to add in some more mana rocks, signets for example, so that you're not fully relying on just soul ring. We also get a slew of tokens, and these are the quasi full art ones, where they've removed part of the border but left the black border around the edge. They look absolutely stunning, and they flip over, so you're saving space using all the tokens in half the thickness, so you don't have to carry around as much. Absolutely loving these, super handy. So that's this C19 deck unboxed. I'm really enjoying this year's offerings and I'm already thinking of what I'm going to be doing with each of them. I'd love to hear your plans for this deck or any of them down in the comments or over on my Discord, which patrons like these lovely folks get access to. I couldn't make these videos without their support. I appreciate you all. If you'd like to see some Commander Deck techs, there's a playlist of them right here, or for something different, why not check out this video? And before I disappear, 
don't forget to subscribe and do all the usual YouTube stuff. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers!